Hello and welcome everyone to the Environment Primer series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pragya and in today's episode of Environment Primer, we are going to discuss a very critical and a pressing issue. The title of our today's discussion is Impact of GM Crops or Genetically Modified Crops on Environment and this issue is being highly debated across India as of now. In this discussion, we will firstly study about what are the GM crops or the genetically modified crops? Then we are also going to study about the rationale behind introduction of GM crops. Then we are also going to see what is the situation with respect to GM crops in India. Then we are also going to see the legal framework with respect to GM crops in India. Then we are also going to try to find an answer to a very important question that what are the challenges, issues and concerns with respect to GM crops. And lastly, we'll see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, you have already heard about this in news that the issue of GM mustard has already reached the Honorable Supreme Court of India and the Honorable Supreme Court of India has already reserved its judgment in this regard. The state governments in India are also not in favor of cultivation of the GM crops and that is why the, the scientists are worried in India because they think that the cultivation of GM crops in India is opposed due to unscientific regions. Okay, so uh, this brings us to the mood uh, question of our today's discussion or mood point of our today's discussion that what exactly are these GM crops or genetically modified crops. So basically these are plants, animals or microorganisms in which DNA has been altered by using techniques such as genetic engineering, biotechnology etc. So that we can achieve some of the desirable traits in those plants, animals or microorganisms. Genetically modified crops, sometimes referred to as genetically engineered crops or biotech crops, are plants whose genetic material has undergone modifications which are not possible through natural recombination or mating. So, this is very different from cross beating of plants, okay? And it uses modern technology to interchange the genes, interchange the natural genes and put some other genes of other plant varieties to have some desirable attributes or traits in them such as increased nutritional values or tolerance to herbicides, pest resistance or longer shelf life. Okay, and that is why they are known as genetically modified crops because we are modifying their natural genes to help uh, uh, them attaining some of the attributes which we want to have in them. Now, let us discuss what is the rationale behind introduction of such crops or rationale behind introduction of GM crops. So, the concerning point behind introduction of GM crops is food security. As per a report, the world population is definitely going to boom in the upcoming years and we need more agricultural produce to feed the growing population. The current challenge in agriculture is to increase productivity, to fight against hunger and malnutrition while lowering environmental footprint like reduction in the uses of groundwater and assuring long term sustainability of agricultural operations because we are already, you know, facing the worst impacts of climate change. We are already aware of the impacts of climate change on environment and that is why we are trying to reduce our uh, greenhouse gas emissions. We are trying to reduce our carbon footprints. And that is why these crops come into picture. Firstly, they help us in maintaining a sustainable agricultural produce. Secondly, they provide us with food security. They provide us with more agricultural produce so that we can feed the growing population. Low input and high output agriculture is the way forward and GM crops can actually help in achieving the goal and they are very important for countries around the globe especially the developing countries. Moving forward. Let us understand 
analyze the situation of GM crops in India. Okay, so India was an early adopter of GM crops when the regulatory body, that is Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, GEAC. Let me know in the comment box below the ministry under which GEAC functions. Okay, cleared the cultivation of BT cotton in the year 2002. Okay. BT cotton remains the only GM crop approved for cultivation in India till date. Although BT brinjal, BT brinjal was also in pipeline for receiving the regulatory approval in the year 2010, but nothing has happened on this front. So basically, we are using just one genetically modified crops, and that is the BT cotton. BT cotton. The issue of GM mustard it has already reached the Honorable Supreme Court of India, although the government is in favor of its cultivation. And if approved, it, it will be the second GM crop that will, we will be cultivating for our commercial purposes. Okay. Also, the area under BT cotton cultivation has increased from less than 1% in 2002 to 2003 to almost 94% in 2019 and 20 because BT cotton is resistant to ball worms. Ball worms. That is a common disease in cotton balls. So that is why the farmers, uh, you know, agree to produce BT cotton because it increases their income and it is disease tolerant. Moving forward, let us analyze the legal framework with respect to GM crops in India. So, the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change in India has established the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee also known as the GEAC and this is the primary body, apex body for approving the commercial cultivation of GM crops in India. The primary responsibility of this statutory body is to regulate the import, export, manufacture, use and storage of hazardous organisms, genetically modified organisms and cells in India as per the 1989 regulations on genetically engineered organisms. So basically this is a statutory body. It functions under the Ministry of Forest and Climate Change and it gives approval for the commercial cultivation of GM crops in India. Moving forward, in 2002 the GEAC allowed the commercial release of BT cotton. Almost 94% of the country's cotton area has since then come under the BT cotton because of its advantages such as increasing farmer incomes and being disease tolerant in nature. Use of an unapproved GM variant can attract a jail term of 5 years and fine of rupees 1 lakh under the Environmental Protection Act of 1986, which is the apex environmental legislation in India. Okay, so you cannot use uh, GM crops like this. You need the approval for from GEAC. And if you make unauthorized use of GM crops in India, definitely you will be liable to imprisonment as well as fine. Moving forward. Let us analyze what are the challenges, issues and concerns with respect to GM crops in India and we are trying to find an answer to this very important question because we are talking about the impacts of GM crops in environment, okay, on environment, biodiversity, etc. So, the first point of discussion is environmental issues pertaining to the genetically modified crops. So, due to their artificial creation or unnatural creation, GMOs can potentially lead to genetic contamination when they interbreed with other crops in the natural ecosystem. They are, you know, a threat to the natural flora and fauna. They are a threat to the natural biodiversity in India. So, definitely they have environmental issues associated with them. Ecologists also raise concerns about the impact of BT crops on non-target insects which could 
disrupt species diversity that means it could disrupt the common food chain of natural insects such as in the case of gm mustard we saw that yes it had a negative impact on honey bees for instance bt corn might negatively affect monarch butterflies that feed on wild milkweed growing near corn fields and this issue was also raised in the case of gm mustard that yes it is going to harm the natural produce of honey by impacting the honey bees moving forward additionally gm technology has the potential to facilitate the transfer of genes between different crops giving rise to super weeds that may develop resistance to conventional control methods and this is the largest concerns that yes it is going to produce a variety of weeds and that in again will turn into a disaster because it will be resistant to common uh, you know conservation methods or it will be resistant to the natural methods that we use to ward off the weeds okay moving forward there are economic considerations as well several assertions regarding stress tolerance nutritional benefits and crop yields have been proven to be inaccurate as evidenced by the experience with bt cotton in india okay despite the widespread adoption of gm cotton or the bt cotton the cotton yield has remained stagnant at approximately 460 kilograms per hectare in the recent times i would request you to verify this figure okay i'm not sure about this figure so kindly verify it but yes one thing i'm sure about is that the produce of bt cotton has remained stagnant throughout the years it boomed once but after that the farmers are complaining that no we are achieving the same yield by natural farming techniques as well moving forward the most significant increase in yield occurred between the year 2000 and 2006 when gm cotton adoption was limited with yields rising from 278 kg to 500 kg per hectare however there has been no similar increase in yield since that period and this proves that yes the yield has been stagnant so the talks about high produce high yield cost effectiveness have all been proved to be inaccurate in nature if you talk about the bt cotton because it is the only gene genetically modified crop or gm crop that we are cultivating for commercial purposes in india moving forward there is an increased chemical uses as well with respect to the gm crops so conversely the escalated illicit application of glyphosate is giving rise to its own set of issues so when we introduced gm crops we said that yes they are you know immune to the insecticides that are being frequently spread in the crops uh, while uh, cultivating them naturally the humans are directly exposed to the consumption of insecticides but the material that is glyphosate which we are using in the genetically modified crops has also its own set of issues while gm cotton was initially promoted as being more resistant to pests the actual uses of chemicals including pesticides in india cotton farming has risen and this proves something which is uh, converse to what was projected what was advertised about the advantages of gm crops in india moving forward cotton farmers in the northern india have been protesting due to pink bollworm infestations and prior to that they face challenges with white fly attacks so this means that they are not completely immune to the insect attacks they are not completely immune to the disease uh, that is naturally occurring in the cotton plants they have their own set of issues and this is being complained by the farmers who are cultivating the genetically modified crops in india moving forward corporate control over agriculture and this is a very important point that yes there is a monopoly in gm crop cultivation
ओके एंड दिस इज द मोनोपली ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट जीएम टेक्नोलॉजी कपल्ड विथ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स हैज फेसिलिटेटेड कॉर्पोरेट डोमिनेंस इन एग्रीकल्चर दिस ग्रांट दीज कॉर्पोरेशन कंट्रोल ओवर द फूड सप्लाई चेन विथ from an economic perspective poses a long term food security risk by creating dependency on a single or a number of suppliers see in agriculture industry we cannot have monopoly we cannot you know think about having limited suppliers because that will definitely be detrimental to the interest of the farmer and the common people but this corporate uh, dominance in gm agriculture is very is a very worrying trend okay and definitely it limits the number of suppliers to only these corporates which have intellectual property rights over the cultivation so it might happen that when the farmers actually need the produce they might not get it and this is a cause of concern in the gm crop cultivation moving forward gm crops and antibiotics so gm crops are engineered to include antibiotics to combat germs and pest and when these crops are consumed the antibiotic markers persist in the body reducing the effectiveness of actual antibiotic medications over time and increasing the risk of super bugs that means when the human consu consumes these genetically modified crops their body will be resistant to the antibiotics which we use as medicines and definitely it is going to pose another human health threat so with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion we have seen what are gm crop we have analyzed its situation in india the legal framework and we have also found out that what are the challenges or issues or concerns in related with the gm crop so the issues and the concerns and challenges can be summarized as impact on natural flora and fauna impact on biodiversity impact on human health because it is making us antibiotic resistance then corporate monopoly in cultivation and their unnatural nature and that is why people and the state governments are wary of cultivation of this gene genetically modified crops but the scientists in india are also worried because they think that they should not be opposed due solely due to unscientific reasons so what can be the way forward in this regard firstly create awareness among the people regarding the cultivation of the gm crops secondly establish a regulatory authority a strong regulatory authority to put a check on corporate monopoly and also to prohibit the illegal use of those crops which are not allowed to be cultivated for commercial purposes so you need to have a very strong regulatory authority in respect to gm crops and you need to uh, create public awareness and you also need to educate the farmers and you also need to protect the natural cultivation of crops along with the gm crops and definitely these are some of the way forwards that the government can think of while promoting the commercial cultivation of gm crops in india now let us discuss a practice question for your prelims examination so the question is consider the following statements your statement number 1 is a genetically modified organism or gmo is any living organism whose genetic material has been modified to include certain desirable techniques your statement number 2 is bt cotton is the only gm crop permitted in india which of the following statements is are correct your options are option a is only one option b is only two option c is both one and two and option d is none of the above so kindly drop your answers in the comment box below now let us discuss a practice question for your mains examination so the question is assess the impact of gm crops on environment and biodiversity so firstly you will write what are gm crops you will write the legal framework the situation in india then you will come to the topic of issues concerns and 
challenges which we have discussed in detail today you will write the ecological impact you will write the environmental impact you will write the economical impact you will write the corporate dominance over cultivation you will mention in brief about the gm crops and antibiotics such as the it is making humans you know resistance to antibiotics which we take as medications so you will finally uh, summarize that yes it has an impact on environment it has an impact on biodiversity natural biodiversity it has an impact on human health it has corporate dominance over its cultivation and definitely it is very unnatural in nature but then you will write the advantages as well that it saves farmers income it can be helpful in achieving food security for a growing population and definitely you will write a way forward that yes we need to create public awareness we need, need a regulatory authority and definitely we need to see that yes we are creating a balance between cultivation of natural crops and gm crops so you can conclude very holistically i hope this session was insightful for you if you have any feedback regarding this session kindly drop it in the comment box below if you like the today's discussion and found it to be helpful Kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such interesting updates. Thank you. For more informative content, like, share, and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.